I want to talk to you about our relationship with Salesforce. Here at Creative Cubes, we are a Salesforce trailblazer. And what does that mean for you? It means that we are able to understand all of our customers' needs in real time, transparently across the entire network. We're talking thousands of data pieces coming into our system via our service, sales, and marketing clouds to enable us to build better product for our members. So salesforce.com is not just for the enterprise, they're doing a lot in the startups and small to medium enterprise businesses as well. I can't endorse them enough. What they have done for our business is transformative and I reckon you should give them a go too. Let's talk about local news here. Um, we're seeing West Farmers. Yep, so um, as we all know, pre-pandemic, for $230 million, Wes Farmers picked up our friend, the Leibovich brothers, uh, Catch.com, they acquired the business. After a couple of months uh, went by, they appointed an ex-Amazon executive to be CEO, who's gonna be leaving on June 30. <laughs> Not as he's gonna be leaving, but he caused a bit of, yeah, a, bit of so, a hole. You know, so as, you know, I think the takeaway here is really about post-acquisition integration is a critical piece to making sure that the money spent on acquiring an asset is used well and, and deployed well within a new environment. Mm -hmm. Wes Farmers, one of the biggest conglomerates in Australia, massive corporate, taking a very entrepreneurial driven, founder led business and bringing it into the fold. Yes, they can throw money, you know, losses of 40 million plus in the first six months of this year to only acquire another 100,000 customers. So they've got 3 million customers, but clearly it's not working the way they were intended. And so I think the mindset, you talk about culture and people that being a hard component, but do you think the mindset is also quite hard in terms of um, bringing an Amazon, ex-Amazon guy in to lead that, yeah. who has growth, 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 and then you've got your traditional retailers in the West Farmers portfolio going, no, 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 this is not kind of how we do it. Yeah, I mean, it, it'll take a while for, it was a big acquisition for Wes Farmers for starters. Maybe totally. not monetary wise, it was a lot of money, 230 mil, but from a, a bet, you know, they're acquiring this as a bet. They're now gonna be moving them into what Wes Farmers are calling like Wes Farmers Digital or Digital One or whatever, whatever the name is, but they're moving it into a digital owned division to be able to start taking learnings from one digital division to the other, which is a smart move. Yeah. But again, it's a move because the existing world of Kmart target land where catch was placed hasn't worked out the way they wanted. And so you think they're gonna hold on to catch? I think in the in the, in the short term, they'll, they'll, they'll hold, hold on. on. It's yeah. not for sale. If it's for sale, just kind of, I know a couple of people, yeah, they may be interested in buying it. <laughs> He's always got to buy it for something, this guy. Global news, Gav. Oh mate, where do we start? Let's start with Stripe. I was hoping in, we'd go past Stripe, but yeah, yeah okay, keep let's going. Let's just touch on Stripe quickly. Okay, just because I know, want to get to the global news. A year ago, uh, just over a year ago, they raised, uh, what was it, $600 million at a $95 billion US dollar valuation, crowning Stripe the most valuable privately held startup in the world. And just this last week, uh, or a couple of weeks ago, were announced as most innovative company in the world as well. Yeah, I think that that's, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's respectable. All eyes are on the next raise. Yep. Their business has clearly exploded over the past 12 months. Yeah, but and if, so what's the bell going to be? Yeah, but if you're saying it's starting to get choppy and there's indicators out there that it is. I got a soft spot for Stripe. I do too, but <laughs> do, do, do the Tiger Globals of the world have a soft spot for Stripe? Or yes. are they going to mark it down 34%? Well, let's see. But then the other thing that we saw this week was a fly through of Tesla Gigafactory in Berlin. Mm. Whoever was driving that drone yeah. clearly has some skills yeah. that, James, that I'm we sorry. need to learn from. You need to watch this video <laughs> of this drone. It was like it went through the production stamp, yeah. stamped yeah. the car out, and then kept going. It's next level. Wow. It's next level. So that was cool. But it also is great for Tesla, Tesla uh, wannabe owners in Australia because that means the Giga, Giga Factory Shanghai can start building for Australia. Is that what they're going to do? That's what they're saying. They're saying because Giga Factory Shanghai has been pushing all their cars off to Europe. Now Berlin can create uh, for Europe, yeah, yeah, which yeah, means yeah. Shanghai can build the model Y for Australia. I was hoping hopefully. he'd come down to Adelaide and, and do Gigafactory well, you're there. in Adelaide. No, 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 oh, but right. you know, so Elon's got a few- After his battery. Yeah, he's yeah. got a few things going on in Adelaide and I just wonder whether or not we have a Gigafactory here or 
a few hundred thousand cars a year is not important to him. He's too but busy. This he's is not busy news. enough. Yeah, but he's not this busy enough doing the Boring Company and SpaceX and all types of Tesla and um, all Star the Starlink. Starlink. Um, he needs to. Um, he needs to. <laughs> he needs to buy nine. Toby's just told me that his battery is about to die on the computer. That's so lucky not, we that's don't. That's not need. my battery. This oh, is your my battery. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> this is on my Mac. Anyway, the point is, last night, less than twelve hours ago, Elon Musk has come out with an SEC filing. He's just acquired for a lazy three billion dollars, nine point two percent of his favorite social network, Twitter. Twitter. And so freedom of speech is something that he's been quite outspoken about. Um, what's interesting about his 9.2% is it makes him the number one shareholder or the largest shareholder. The largest shareholder. I think uh, Jack Dorsey, who is one of the co-founders and CEO up until recently, owns less than 4%. Yep. So he has a big seat at the table here. Yep. Whether he takes a board seat or not, it's too early to tell with those types of things. But what's he going to do with it? We do know that he is a prolific tweeter. While sitting on the loo. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say porcelain, Porcelain, okay. um, but he actively engages on this platform. He has over 70 million followers. He's, he did tweet out recently saying, should he build a new social network? That's hard in this day and age when there's, you know, everyone fighting for eyeballs and activity and everyone's limited in their time. That's hard. He's clearly seen Twitter, which is his favorite yep. as, a, as a target. And, and here he is now as a 9.2% owner. I, uh, I can't wait till next month, Gav, when you're back. Not on the porcelain, but actually here on the vlog, um, he may have may give us a bit more intel as to the why. Yeah, I think he's one of those types of founders who really swings for the fences. So uh, oh, beyond the fence, beyond he's the swinging fence. for the moon, mate. He's swinging for Mars. He's swinging for Mars. It's yeah. well beyond the fence. Unbelievable. So, uh, now it's it's a, it's a very interesting development over the past 12, 12 hours, and happy to bring it to this audience here. Guys, uh, we'll be back not this time next yeah. month. But we'll be back next month, probably with bigger news. You know, I think we, we keep saying, can't get much bigger than this. That's right. And it does. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See ya.